Hey everybody, this video is um, composed of material that we cut out of another video about getting your instance set up to be able to enroll students. Um, we're putting it here because um, we think it's still helpful and there's good information that just covers how to enroll students manually, um, course by course, and then how to set things up to do online enrollment, and then also how um, that online enrollment process looks from the student perspective. So that's what this is. If it seems a little out of context, it's just because it's from another video, you might have even come here from that other video. Welcome. Um, so here that material is, and I'll be back at the end. We're gonna circle back to manual enrollment real quick because unfortunately uh, there's another kind of uh, hiccup there. There are a couple different ways of manually enrolling students. So you can go course by course from say a roster. So if you have a bunch of courses and then you've got a roster of students that you're trying to input manually, um, that you can work that way, or you can go student by student. So let's say you had a bunch of student transcripts and you were trying to get those into the system, then you would just um, real simply go in and, um, and then uh, work from a student's profile and add each course that they were in in each term. You can do it either way. Um, just for simplicity's sake, we're going to um, talk through the working course by course from a roster method. And um, that other component is in the handout. So if you need to um, work that way, there's a good description of that in the handout. Okay, so enrolling course by course from a roster. We're gonna start by just going up here. So it's the search field, and we're gonna search for that. Let's just type essay writing. There we go. That's a course instance um, result. We're gonna click on that and that'll take us here to the course itself. Then we'll go to the roster tab. We'll click add students, add students by name. We're gonna go in and find that student. So we've searched for that student. We've got the result, click on that student. If we had, say, a list of other students here, we could continue to, to find students and enroll them all at once, okay? So you'd be able to, to do that here. So again, if you have a roster for a course, you can just go in and real easily add those students um, all at once there from that roster. You just keep going, adding those students until you had them on it, all in, and then save. And once you save, there they are. So that's basically the process for enrolling students um, from the roster of a specific course there. We're gonna skip over then to looking at setting up self-enrollment. We're gonna do that by going to academics, academic term info, and then on the term selector, make sure we've got the term that we want selected there. And then you'll see down here, we've got online enrollment um, as a SIL here. To the right there, you'll see an option for edit. You'll click that. And then we'll wanna set the date that this is going to start. So um, we're gonna set it for June 6th. And then you can see that we've automatically got a, um, a date in here for the end date. What we do is you'll see that there's this add drop date. You can kind of see it here in shadow, this add drop date that's already been set when the term was created. Um, and that add drop date is typically when online enrollment ends. If that's not the way that it works for you, then um, you can change that there. So you can have it close um, uh, on whichever date you'd like. There's some other options down here. You can open this 
by a specific standing. So let's say that you want to let your upperclassmen register before um, your underclassmen, you would be able to set those dates as well. This is still the date when everyone is going to be able to enroll, but you could give them a bit of a jump. You could set it, you know, sometime in May or whatever, and then they would be able to get in there and enroll in their um, chosen classes first. We have some other advanced options. I'll refer you to that handout for more information on that. So we'll save this though. So online enrollment is set up for this term. We've got a, an academic term with a course instance. We've got the online enrollment period all set. Now we're gonna see what it looks like from the student perspective when they go to enroll in a course. When a student logs into Populi, they'll see these options here under home, home dashboard, under alerts, they'll see registration is now open. When they click on that, they'll be taken directly to their registration tab where they can start choosing courses, managing their enrollment for that term. If you have multiple terms um, of enrollment open, you'll see a drop down here that allows you to select which term you're looking at. There's some other features like that. Um, and also, students can get here directly just by coming to my profile and then going to registration um, if they, for some reason, don't follow that link. So we want to talk a little bit about what dictates that a course shows up here on their registration tab. One of the big ones is program. Students need an active program that matches a program that's on the catalog entry. So if you'll remember, we created um, ENG125 with the undergraduate program set on the course catalog. We could have multiple programs set on the course catalog. That would be fine. We could add you know, a master's program or whatever else in there. But whatever's there, in order for a student to be able to see it here, they need to have the um, uh, same program active on their profile because Sonia does have that um, active. She's able to see all of these programs or these courses here that have a matching program. So anything, that's just a way of controlling what, you, what a student actually sees here. You could keep things wide open and have you know, a bunch of different um, courses that are applicable to many different programs, but then that potentially gets confusing. The other limiting factor that you have is campus. So obviously, if you have courses that are at a specific physical campus, um, a student will only be able to register for those courses if they have that campus set on their profile. And when they have uh, a matching campus, then they'll show up here. You'll see here that these four courses all um, show that there's they ha that they have the core with campus. That's the campus that Sonia also has. That's why she's able to see these courses. This one here at the end does not have a campus listed. So it doesn't have a campus on the instance, but as you can see, uh, courses that don't have a campus set can be seen by all campuses. So that's how things work um, for campus visibility there. So you could have maybe an online course or something that students don't you know, need to be at a specific um, physical spot for, and so students from any campus could, could see it, and that would be one way of handling that. What a student then does is they go through and they click on that plus sign. You can see here we've got courses to enroll in or courses to audit. Um, so since we want this student to enroll, they need to have that selected there. And then they're just gonna go through and click the plus sign to add, then click add. And that course will be added up above. We'll have Sonia enroll in calculus as well. And then once that's all set there, we click save. Then the registration is going to process. Once that's all done, now the student is enrolled in those two courses. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to subscribe 
and click that little notifications bell. Ding, ding, ding.